Hey guys, it's Charlene. I wanted to share with you today some truths that I have found out about embossing powder and anti-static powder tools. So a while back, I purchased the Cottontail embossing powder tool from Rabbit Hole Designs. It has been everywhere. And of course I thought I have to have that. So I ordered it a while back and it uses what is called kale and clay. And that's a little different from all of the other tools that are out on the market. They tend to use cornstarch or something like that. Unfortunately, most brands don't really disclose what they're using, uh, but I've done a little bit of web research and it looks like most of the time it's some kind of cornstarch, something that is essentially uh, soaking up any oils that might be on the paper and making it easier for the embossing powder to fall off of your paper. Here you can see I am putting together the tool for the first time. It's pretty easy and it's pump action. So when you pump it, that kale and clay is pumped up into the brush and then it has a little cap you put on. For my experiment, I have three pieces of cardstock and the first two I have used the general anti-static powder bag that I think just about everybody has, except for on the second one, I also used a sweet brush. And the reason I did that was because I thought, well, I'm gonna get any excess powder off because I've heard that cornstarch acts as a thickening agent and that can make your embossing powder look kind of lumpy when it's melted. So I thought, all right, first one I'll do with the bag. Second one I'll do with the bag and the sweep. And then the third one, I will use the Rabbit Hole Designs embossing powder tool. Now I'm coming in with some Versamark embossing ink. This is a pretty standard and sticky embossing ink. A lot of people have this. And I am stamping each paper with a butterfly stamp. I've used a somewhat detailed butterfly stamp because I wanted it to accurately represent sort of what I'm stamping with embossing powder a lot of the time. I'm using Ranger Super Fine Detail Embossing Powder in black. Black is the embossing powder that I tend to have the most trouble with with sticking everywhere. I don't know why. I wonder if it has to do with the amount of maybe pigment that's in the embossing powder. I have no idea. But I have stamped and now I've covered each of the pieces of paper with the embossing powder and now I am blowing on each piece of paper to get any excess little pieces of embossing powder off. That's kind of my standard practice when I'm making a card. I do the powder tool, the stamping, the powder, then I blow on the cardstock and then I use a flathead paintbrush and I go around the images and I get any excess little pieces of embossing powder off of the paper. I wanted to give you guys as accurate of a representation of what I normally do as possible so that this could be somewhat scientific in its approach. So once I've done these three cards and I'm getting ready to heat emboss them, I realize, you know what, I don't have a control. I need to do one without any kind of anti-static powder tool. So that way I can see how that comes out as well. So you're gonna see here in a moment, I am going to put together a fourth piece that doesn't have any anti-static powder. I think you guys are gonna be pretty surprised by the outcome of my little experiment. I know I was, I was kind of shocked, so, You'll have to let me know down in the comments what you think. If you think this kind of video is helpful, I decided to make it because I was curious, but then I thought, you know, other people might want to know as well if these tools actually make a difference because there doesn't seem to be a lot of information out there, at least not that I've seen, looking at the actual kind of before and after of these products like what what are they doing and um some of the things i can see on my own and it's kind of obvious like using a dry flathead paintbrush to sweep off any excess around your image that i can see i know it's making a difference because i see myself wiping away those little particles of embossing powder but the embossing powder tool it's I, I'm not really seeing whether or not it makes a difference because I have always 
pretty much used them. Ever since I started making cards, I've I bought one when I bought my first embossing powder. Um, so I don't think I've ever really made a card without embossing powder, anti-static powder. So this is really eye-opening for me. I found it super helpful. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. So here you can see I'm taking the fourth piece of cardstock. And I think I mentioned this before, but this is all Nina 80 pound cardstock, a pretty standard cardstock that a lot of people use. I thought that would be the best one to use for this experiment. I will tell you that the type of cardstock you use does make a difference, and that's just from experience, but we are not gonna get into that today. We're just talking about the tools today. Okay guys, here they are. And here's what is so shocking. There is not a huge difference between any of these. All of the differences are very subtle. I found a little bit of a difference between the one where I used the sweep brush and the one where I didn't when I was using the powder bag. Not much though. And then the rabbit hole designs, I did absolutely see a difference. The last one where I used nothing, you can see still makes a beautiful heat embossed image. So I was pretty surprised by all of this. I will say the biggest difference I found between using a tool and not using a tool was on all of the inset little detail areas where I couldn't put a paintbrush to sweep away pieces. There were a lot more stray little pieces on the control where I didn't use any kind of powder tool. Now the next biggest difference was between the powder bag and the rabbit hole designs embossing tool. You can see here, the lines are sharper on the rabbit hole designs version. Something about that kaolin clay helps so that the embossing powder doesn't get kind of thick and bunchy. That is true. I was really surprised. I didn't imagine it would make a difference, but it does. Here's the big question. Is it worth it to buy an anti-static powder tool? I don't know. I think you guys will have to make that decision for yourself. Is it worth it to buy the new rabbit hole designs tool? For me, yes. One, I think it makes a difference when it comes to detailed sentiments. The fact that you get those smooth lines really does make a difference. Also, huge benefit, there is not a ton of powder hanging out all over in my drawer where I keep my embossing powder tools anymore. The rabbit hole designs tool is self-contained and I think that makes a huge difference. Well guys, I hope this was helpful. I hope it will help you on your crafting journey. I hope you find some time to get crafty today. Please do hit the like and subscribe button as well as the notification bell so I can continue bringing you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, Happy crafting.